welcome back everybody so this is gonna be a quick update video for you guys on stock market and before we get started please smash that like button and 100 plus likes on this video would be greatly appreciated guys and if you're new here consider subscribing now if you want to get my daily trade ideas swing trade ideas live trading and you want to support the channel definitely check out their link down below in the description for patreon Dow is up 0.13%, Nasdaq going up 0.51%, S&P going up 0.47% and Russell going down on Friday 0.21%. And here is 11 sectors that makes up S&P 500 on top leading the way communication services, healthcare and then we have technology, financial, real estate, utilities, basic materials, consumer cyclical, energy, consumer defensive and industrials. Now. Week to date performance right here. You can see on top leading the way energy, technology, financial, communication services, industrials on bottom lagging behind, basic materials, utilities, consumer defensive, consumer cyclical, and real estate. So what we got here on stock market map, we got Amazon going up 0.69%, Tesla going up slightly over half a percent. We got Meta going up 1.60%, Google up almost 1%, Apple going up 1.37%, Microsoft also going in the green up 0.83% and then look at right here the big name Nvidia actually flat on the day We got Intel taking another beating down 3.81% even AMD going down from healthcare Eli Lilly leading the way it's up over 5% on Friday Then we got big banks JPM going up 0.85% Bank of America and Wells Fargo absolutely flat on the day and some of these regional banks are also going up Friday, but look at industrials right here not really doing much and then you've got energy also uh, Kind of participating in that rally going up big names like Chevron and XOM up 0.81 percent And I just want to give you guys heads up what's coming next week We do have PPI data that is coming out Tuesday morning 8:30 a.m And then on top of that we have CPI coming out Wednesday morning 8:30 a.m and that's going to cause lots of volatility here in this market so get ready for that on spy etf it's up 0.44 percent so we're not out of the woods yet and why we got all these moving averages right here are negative sloping to the downside so definitely that is not a bull trend and we're just getting a dead cat bounce on low volume even on friday you can see it right on my screen now what's next here on spy etf a lot of people are still talking about a massive crash and I said that before in my video, if you look at the thumbnail, it says the crash or just a dip buying opportunity right on my thumbnail. And this was, in fact, at least a short term money making opportunity, guys. And anything that I actually bought Monday morning and I actually did a lot of shopping Monday morning and into even closing everything that I bought. I mean, look at this move here on Spy ETF from where? 510 now 535 that is a massive move and not to mention on triple q that is actually a 30 dollar move almost to the upside and that is a huge move for one week guys so that is where retail traders investors like us can make a lot of money take advantage of this massive volatility and especially this big sell-off and if you're buying when things are oversold obviously you know, even if you're not going long, you can make a ton of money. And Monday was one of those days where I actually made really good money right here on this dip on SPY ETF. Now, what about next week? Well, you can see we can actually get a rejection from 535. It's actually holding right here, right where we got rejected before 533, pretty much into closing. So 535 that's gonna be resistant to watch if we gap over it then watch out for a move up to this gap right here 539.43 and over that critical resistance at 543 we also have 20 day which is a negative slope here on this daily time frame sitting near 543 so we can get rejection anywhere here maybe at 535 or we can possibly push a bit higher up to this gap 539.43 and then we can see a pullback again unless we actually come back and retest i would say 524.78 and we can hold right here make a new higher low and then go back up and take out 535 
and that is the way to go back up to the upside. So watch out. I mean, yes, we're getting this big bounce. Things were getting oversold, but we're not out of the woods yet. Definitely not out of this downtrend here on this daily time frame. So going into Monday morning, over 535, definitely there is a chance for this gap to get filled. 539.43, there will be resistance there. And then above that, we also have strong resistance at 543. Over that level, definitely we can go back up to all-time highs again. There is a huge possibility over 543. Now, we get a rejection from 535, and then we come back and take out 533. We might be coming back all the way down to 524.78, and just below that, right here, this critical support, this thing can come back and make a new low, and that means what, guys? There is still a gap down here. We did fill some of these gaps. Now there is a gap at 505.89, so until we actually can hold, I would say 543, we're not out of the woods yet. And under 543, we can set up a lower high anywhere here and things can pull back and possibly can take out this low 510. In that case, this gap will likely to get filled 505.89 on SPY ETF. On Triple Q, it's up just over half a percent and look at this monstrous move to the upside from these lows, 423 trading at almost 453 that is a $30 move to the upside in just a matter of five days now people that actually bought the dip they made a ton of money we have the highest volume last week that was on Monday's gap down and now you can see as you know things are going up volume again drying up so what's next well we can set up a lower high anywhere here guys now what's positive right here on triple Q we did actually close over this resistance right here multiple rejection right here at 449 and now it's trading at 450 so as long as you can stay over 449 going into monday's session watch out for a move possibly up to this gap 455.98 and we can break that then possibly heading higher up to 460 and then even retesting this negative sloping 20 day moving average 464.28 now on triple q definitely this is actually a strong downtrend and how you can see 20 day and all these other moving averages 5 and 13 crossing below this red line 50 day and that is a strong downtrend on triple q now to the downside underneath that support right here 449 immediately you're going to see a flush down to 440 and from there this thing can come down to 432 and then right down here 424.88 and below this one, this critical support, we might be coming back all the way down to 413. On Dow Jones, it's up 0.16%. So let's talk about my last video where I actually uh, took my time and gave you guys a really good breakdown that we can go down even more and it will be still bullish. Now, a lot of people are still, and even back then, they were bearish and they were talking about a crash. Well, what happened on Monday, guys? Where was the crash? I didn't see any crash. You know, we actually bought the dip Monday morning and it was a fantastic, huge, huge money making opportunity on Monday. And even uh, some of these days down here, even on this red candle, it was a money making opportunity here in this market. Now, people that are talking about a crash, if there is a crash, you will know, you will see it with your own eyes. There is no crash, nothing. We only came down, especially on NASDAQ in a big way. I, you know, you can say like uh, on Monday, it was like 15, 16%. But, you know, that's totally, you know, understandable. And why? Because how the NASDAQ 100 went up when things were going to all-time highs, how many all-time highs we actually hit. So now if things are coming back, now recession fear and all that crap, when things are happening, if there is actually a recession fear and there is actually a crash in the market, we all know. It's going to go really quick and you're going to see market not bouncing that quick from oversold condition. Now, what we saw last week, well, Monday, the dip got bought up. The next day, things went even higher. We actually got a gap up and the next day went even higher. And then we got this red candle. Things were going back up again on Thursday and even Friday. We actually finished in the green. So. How come nobody's talking about that? People still are talking about crash or when a crash can happen. Well, this is not how things crash. You know, yes, in Japan, they actually had a circuit breaker going on. 
Did we actually get that here? Absolutely not. So there is no crash, guys. Nothing going on. You know, these videos are coming out. These videos are clickbait talking about a crash and the crash never comes. And a lot of people are making videos for, you know, since uh, 2022 bear market that there is going to be a huge crash. There is going to be a huge crash. Let's just short everything. And guess what? The crashes are not happening at this moment and people are losing money. So just follow the price action. I'm not a bull. I'm not a bear. What I do in my channel and my real life trading, momentum trades and buying up those dips at the right time and even shorting at the right time. So, you know, you don't want to be a big bull. You don't want to be a big bear. Just follow the trend. And you can see when things get oversold and people get bearish, guess what? Market rallies back up. And this is exactly what we got on Monday and even uh, last whole week. You know, things went down, it got oversold. And now you can see, I mean, that was a massive bounce from these lows down here. Now here on DIA Dow Jones, we do have support down here, guys. Right here at 394 to 395, 50 day moving average. And looks like we're actually holding this 50 day moving average into closing as a support. Yes, we are 394.83. So I would say 395, your critical level here on Dow Jones. And underneath that level, we have strong support at 390.84 and then 386.61 down to 384. And uh, once we get under 384, then we can talk about possibly down to even 376. Now to the upside, as long as I would say Dow Jones can hold right here between 391 to 395, Watch out for continuation up to 398.47 to retest negative sloping 13 day moving average. And over this level, you're going to see this gap getting filled right here, just above 400. On IWM, it's down 0.21%. And just when you think IWM is crashing, this thing going right back up. Now, it's not completely out of the woods yet. We definitely did not hold right here at 210 to 211. This previous resistance right here, weekly breakout did not hold right here. So yes, in that case, it's not looking that bullish. Also, the trend is down right now. And you can see these moving averages pointing down to the downside. And that is not actually a good thing for the bulls on IWM. Now, things can change very quickly. If this thing can break right here, 50 day moving average, which is sitting really close to 208. So I would say 208 breaks, watch out for a move back up to 210 to 211. And that is where IWM needs to break and needs to hold. And if that happens, we're going to see IWM actually going up and filling this entire gap right here at 215. And over that level, we can talk about IWM going back up to even 225. Now, if IWM cannot break 208, and guess that rejection from this 50 day moving average, then watch out for a dump off back down to five day moving average, 204.39. And underneath that level, you're going to see 200 and then 198. Now, anytime you see 198, this critical support gone, that means one thing, guys, this thing will make a new law. And that could be right down here at 193 or maybe even 188. So careful right here. Yes, there is a huge opportunity to the upside to fill this gap at 215, but also you gotta be really cautious catching this falling knife. And if this thing comes back, you gotta get out. I would say under 204, I would not hold anything on IWM and let this thing come down and possibly make a new low. And then if you wanna buy the dip, you can at that point. Right now, over 208, more upside and under, downside and critical support at 204.39 on vix again getting crushed on friday down 14.38 percent but again remains elevated and over 20 bucks and we definitely did not hold from my last update at 30 bucks so this thing got decimated i mean this was a really strange thing in the market guys and why if you ask me pre-market monday morning this thing was up i think 150%, something like that. Not sure exactly how much this thing was up. I saw it, but it was over, I would say at least 130%. And I'm pretty sure it was like 150%. Now, this thing going up 150%, and we only got a pullback, and that is on NASDAQ 100, and it was only like, what, 5%? And the dip was bought up. It was actually down, you know, not even 3% that day. And on uh, SPY ETF, we actually got, you know, I think uh, three and a half, four percent 
where this thing went up like 150%. So things are not lining up. And I also said that before in my video, when this thing was down here, that you know a lot of calls are coming in, $45 strike. And you can see, I mean, how well that actually played out, guys. I mean, yes, someone actually, uh, they knew what was coming. And that's why they bought those calls on VIX, 45 strike. And they're going in the money, way over the money, guys. Huge, huge move to the upside. But the concern here and the point I'm trying to make, if this thing goes up like 150%, we should see you know, more selling in the market. And why more selling? Well, that is the way to make money. Because if you're chasing, you're not going to make a lot of money. If there is a huge sell-off, big dump off in the market, we retail traders, investors, people that are not chasing. I'm talking about people that are with a lot of experience in this market, we can actually buy these dips and we can make a ton of money like I did at least last week on Monday. So here on VIX guys, it's still elevated over 20. This is gonna be a critical level to watch. If we can get a bounce off of this level 20, watch out for a move back up to 23 to 26 on VIX and that can happen with that CPI. And over 26, going back up to five day moving average, 27.66 and then 30 bucks. Now, if this thing gets under 20, in that case, you know, market probably bottomed in the short term. And this thing can come back down to 18 and then slowly will be down to 15 bucks. So watch out. You know, this thing can give you a lot of guidance going into next week and especially on Monday. On dollar, absolutely flat on Friday. And there is not much going on right here on dollar. And this thing definitely breaking down right now. And I think it can come down to flat 100. Now you can see how well that is actually playing out. This is actually a weekly wedge right here. And we got really tight here on this uh, weekly wedge. And also this trend line right here, you can see uh, it actually got into this uh, trend line multiple times. And this thing got a bounce. And soon as we actually broke this uptrend right here, things never went back up here on dollar. And now, on Friday, I mean, you can see this thing came back and, you know, there is not much going on here on dollar. So this thing can break down even more, possibly come down and retest. I would say right here, that's going to be around 100 cents. So that is going to be the next stop here on dollar. Now here on this daily time frame, we saw this bear flag. We called it before. It actually played out nicely to the downside. And now, I mean, you can call this a bear flag as well right here. If this thing cannot hold 103, the next stop 102.61 and then flat 100. Only way up, dollar has to break 103.58. And over that level, you're going to see a move up to 104.48 to even 105. And that's all I have for you guys in this video. Thank you so much for watching.